This week we bring you the story of Mr. Mark, a Belgian landscaper who dedicated his life to his work. His customers wear his everything. But unfortunately, around the age of 40 years old, Mr. Mark died. He had no family to take over the place and everything has been left behind for years on end right now. Inside of the house we found all Mark has belongings, but what was most crazy about this place is that the electricity still worked. Let's go on an adventure throughout his home. So because Mark was a landscaper I want to dedicate this place mostly to the outside because it's crazy. Later on we go, we'll go inside, there is still power inside and everything, it's just crazy but first because he was a landscaper, let's check out his garden. Because he must be most proud of it. This was his little sign uh, from his gardening, from his landscaping company. At car wheel, uh, the, the horse, uh, the, the carriage wheel it says in, in uh, English. That was his name for the company. And uh, yeah, let's go into one of his first workshops. Come in here. Everything from his landscaping company is left behind in here. As you can see the chains from the chainsaws that he used. Wow. Is this a sable? Oh no, this looks like something from... <laughs> Look at this piece. Wow, it looks like... <laughs> but it's for, for the stove. Over here he maintained his, his, his equipment and uh, he had all sorts of different uh, tools to do that. Lots of oil, of course, to lubricate his equipment. Very important when you're a landscaper. Look over here. These would be filled with all different plants that he used with his customers. So sad what happened to him. Damn. Look at the overgrown garden over here. It's just crazy, right? You must have been so proud of this place and then it all goes to waste right now. Over here is his car. I'm gonna check out that one later. First we're gonna go to here. But there's another shed that I wanted to show. It's a cool piece of equipment in there. Yes, let's go through the bushes. I'm gonna let you go first. Let's see. Wow, it's an ATV machine. He probably went to the customers with it that are not so far. Here he put his brushes in, his rooms in, and all his tools to use in the farm. Look at this. Beautiful machine. Some more boxes for his equipment. His logo coming back again here. Wow. All left. The lawnmower here. Two, three lawnmowers. Uh, these are lawnmowers, I think, and these are to uh, put air into the grass, I would say. I don't know the exact word or the exact term, but it's to uh, uh, plow the grass, maybe. Okay. Let's have a look at his. Let's have a, have a look at his uh, at his jeep. Oh, look down here. There's another grass mower. Wow. Look at that piece. Even the license plate is still on it. Isn't that just crazy? Wow. A Nissan truck. He had these bars on top to for his equipment to go to the customers. Can we go through here? Is that possible for you? Let me open it up. Ah. Excuse me, Jeff. And this was the inside of his truck. What I found interesting is here on a mirror, 
he had this little sign that says, hey, this, you have to drive this way because he probably parked his car. What I find most interesting about his truck is he has put these little stickers on the mirrors. Uh, so when he put his car next to the road, when he was working in the garden, people would know, hey, the, uh, this car is standing still and I have to uh, drive around it. Pretty smart man, Mark. We can even go deeper into his garden. I think this must have been a pretty nice garden when it was nicely uh, trimmed and he cared about it. But now it's just overgrown. Oh my gosh. He had a little pond over here. All the bamboo here. Yeah. So sad that this man had no family to take over the place and just is now like this. Damn. Now I'm gonna take a look inside of his house and see what Mr. Mark left behind. This is the pathway to his house. He designed it very beautifully with this arch over here. Could go underneath. Very natural. Trees here in his front garden. We hear music coming from the house. <laughs> That's because our friend inside decided to put on the radio. Let me see. Okay, here we can go into the house. Hello. So I'm gonna take it over from here, from Jeff. I filmed this place myself. This is where you would come in. It's the entrance hall. Wow. And what I found very interesting is this calendar of these beautiful ladies having uh, working with machinery, steel machinery, steel. Look at that. His, his, his hobby, his, uh, his passion in life and what he made a living with was, was his work, was his, uh, his landscaping company. What's this room? go further into this room let's turn back over here he hanged up all his raincoats his working coats when he was working maybe in a pond or something like that water tight clothes oh my gosh look over here I just noticed the whole basement is flooded damn but it wasn't much anyway And then from here, we come into one of the most pristine living rooms that I've ever seen in an abandoned house. Oh my gosh. The craziest part of all this, I can just turn on the lights in this place. It's just like somebody lives in here, but actually not. Mark's, Mark's spirit lives in this place. books that he read about all about landscaping and plants and countryside and nature wow those were the books that he loved and he read here is his name dedicated mark he lived alone in this place a little here some more books and stuff like that Here are some shoes from him. Just insane to see. A little stamp. What's on there? Oh, it's from the fire department. Look at the pictures over here. It's very nice. Always nice to see some pictures. This might have been, okay, let me see. This might have been one of the gardens that he made. Maybe some grandchildren over here. Wow. Here, he was very proud of his gardens that he made. Another garden he made. And most of the pictures in here are all about gardens. <laughs> this man lived for his work. Wow. His puppy. 
at this little cabinet filled with glasses over here. Look at that. This is a, wow, this is a really, really big girl. Look at her. She's huge. And this person here might have been Mark. Close it up again. Key box. No keys inside anymore. <laughs> Some fake fruits up here. Wow. All the children. I'm just gonna turn off the electricity right now because I don't want to cause any shortage, shortage in the house and it burns down and it would be really sad. Here on the table in the living room, we have these comic uh, books and these are from uh, Belgium. These comic books, they are made in Belgium, produced and designed in Belgium. Really proud of that. Another child. Okay, let's go through here. I think this used to be, yes, this was his bedroom actually. He had a little fireplace in here. This is actually a pretty small and cozy home. I really would love to live here, very down to nature. A lot of pills left behind. Wow, this is not the house. This is a, a drone picture from a house somewhere, but maybe his former house. It was also very good in something. Let's see. Oh yes, this is a golf ball, or no, this is a beach volleyball, a volleyball, volleyball. Excuse me. Faxing machine. Let's see what's in the drawers. Oh, here are the stickers that I saw outside on the car. He has more of them. Look at that. <laughs> All about the safety, Mr. Mark said. His bed over here, still made after all those years. All those years, yeah. So it's only been abandoned for two years. Excuse me. Whoa. Let's see if, let's see if any clothes left behind in here. This one is empty. Oh, look at that. Some clothes in there. Oh, wow. This man only had working clothes. He was a real worker. Whoa. Beautiful. <laughs> he had even tools inside of his house. If you have no woman, I think you can just do that. It's your own life. Some plates and cups and all these different things. Here he's very proudly showing off one of his machines that he used to the snipper to, uh, to make the wood smaller, I would say. I don't know the exact word for that. It's medical cabinet. Let's see if there's anything left in here. Oh, it's locked up. Wow. Okay, now it's time to go into the kitchen. Let's have a look in the kitchen. Very small kitchen over here. Very basic. His logo again coming back. It's still. Oh! Oh! I should not open those. Trust me. Every time I'm, I'm like, mm, I'm gonna look in the fridge. And then I open the fridge and then I just regret it because it's so incredibly disgusting that smell. Oh my gosh. I should not do that. <laughs> little microwave up here, an egg boiler, all the things left in here. You see, this is what happens when somebody passes away. The spiders take over and nature takes over. Look outside here. You could see all the plants in this garden right from the window. Am I gonna open this one? Yeah, I'm, I'm stupid and I'm always doing it. 
this one is empty. And because he had such a small home, he also had his own, yeah, he had the shower inside of his, head, his kitchen. So he showered in the kitchen. Oh my gosh. Isn't that just crazy? A little boil, boil next to it. Some stoves and some kettles. I think I also saw, yes, there's also an upstairs area. First off here, a little religious symbol. Oh, this leads up to the attic. A little storage area. This was probably where he worked. Uh, he, he did his uh, paperwork and stuff like that. This is a little desk to do all that stuff, kind of stuff. As a landscaper, he probably didn't enjoy that part of his, of his job, but that's necessary to keep afloat. Then to the attic to see what memories are up here. Oh, it's pretty empty, unfortunately. Normally I find these yeah, flooded attics with all kinds of different stuff. But here, there's absolutely nothing on this attic. Damn. Oh, wow. Beautiful little untouched home that I just explore. Oh my gosh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And Mark, I want to say to you, you were you too young to go. You had so much more to do in your life, make these beautiful gardens. I hope you're doing good up there. And one, I want to thank you and give you respect. This last ode to your life, to your home. So thank you very much, everybody, for watching this week's video. There's a little link in the description for Patreon. There you can support us and uh, this helps us a lot for, to make these documentaries around the world because it's expensive, of course. If you support us for $10 or more, or more a month, you will get your name at the end of the video. Thank you very much, guys, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Love you.